and every one of us here, God has a desired way with which he wants us to incline towards him. You know that? There is a way God wants us to seek him. There is a way God wants us to respond to him. There is a way God wants us to fast. There is a way God wants us to worship him. There is a way God wants us to yield to him. There is a way he wants us to, to feel for him. And sometimes, if he leaves that to us, to find that kind of conviction that will break us towards that course, we might never, we might never get there. Hallelujah. We might never get there. And so what he does, he employs of his grace and mercy experiences. Some of you would like to call it encounters, whichever way they come, for you to, to test of in the event that you consume of that experience, you are left with a wanting, you are left with a seeking, you are left with a persuasion to want to consume more of that kind. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You see, there are people who struggle in prayer, and I'll tell you the truth, because there is a place in prayer they haven't yet reached. There are those who struggle in fasting because there is a place in fasting they haven't reached. Like there are those who struggle in giving because there is a, there's a reality in giving they have not yet reached to. For example, there are those that God knows that they, they might be praying a lot, but they actually want in the place of the word. Are we together? They actually want in the place of what? He knows they might be fasting a lot, but they actually want in the place of evangelism. That's why it's important to be attuned with the Spirit. With the Spirit. He can only allow you to progress in that which finds its place in His will for your life. We can't progress outside that. You see, as we progress, we adopt to the end of His will for what? For our lives. Hallelujah. So your emotions are now raptured into His holiness. So your faculty of decision making, your faculty uh, of feeling, your faculty of will, okay? Your faculty of devotion, that place in you that easily commits a word's commitment to whatever wins its attention. He seduces it. You understand what I'm saying? To stay on that which you need the most. And amazingly, you might never interpret to know that that's what you need the most. But to interpret to know that you need it the most, it's possible if you are consistent with the word to study and to know, oh, this is where I am. As I read, I see that Moses was here. Ah, so this is where I am. You understand? And now when you are able to locate it, and interpret it by the knowledge of the word. Praise the Lord Jesus. It ceases to be heaven coercing you. It now becomes partnership. It becomes fellowship. You get what I'm saying? It now becomes easy for you to give yourself holy unto it. You don't wait for, for heaven to set up a bait to captivate your attention. No. Now you respond from knowledge. You understand? you have matured to know what to do. So praise God. There are people who pray and then they're just praying because they feel like praying, but they can't interpret where those feelings are coming from. But you see, let, let's begin from here. Why does he allow these things to come? Let me tell you something. You should be mature enough, enough to interpret the depth of every experience that unfolds before you. Because it will come with the ability to stir up in you many things but of the many are you able to single out that one thing that one purpose for to which that experience is come you see that men will look and say oh, yeah, yeah, that guy he cast out a devil and it left in the name of jesus he's a man of god he's anointed but your perspective the lens with which you're seeing that experience and interpreting the purpose for to which it came is different it is different hallelujah you see, the God we are dealing with is spirit. If you are going to wait to figure him out in what appears in the face and sense of logic, you will die waiting. And I'm telling you, 
the realm of the spirit is, is swift to those that are open to it. Swift to those that are open to it. Man is that vulnerable. The, listen, in the spirit, there is no law that limits man from yielding. The only limitation of man from yielding, are you hearing me? Is when he hands over the, his right to the power that will be superior to him to determine what he must be. When you belong, then you limit. But if you neither belong this way or neither belong that way, you are open. But, but these things are that serious. To limit one realm is to belong to another. Belonging in the way that you are full of the essence of that realm. You are full of the essence of that realm. Your emptiness is a summoning to another realm. Your fullness is a limitation to another. I, I, I've just taught someone how to stop falling sick. I've just taught someone how to close doors on witchcraft. If you are full, that realm will not have business with you. But if you are empty, you summon them. For the more you stay empty, is the more you call them. You don't have to. You don't have to. Listen, you don't have to tell them, "Come." No, your emptiness is a deep language. <laughs> It's a, it's a language with depth enough to single them into your space, locate them into your space, I'm telling you. Just like fullness in the spirit is also a language with depth that calls the virtues of the spirit into your space. Just being full. Tell your neighbor, just being full. So never forget that. What is limitation to another is when you are full of what it differs with. Are you hearing me? If you are full of the Holy Spirit, you limit the realm of the Spirit that differs with the realm of God. You think the limitation, I bind, I break, I cut, I what? No. You bind, but you're empty. In fact, the more you praise, the more they feel you. Because you're empty. Then what do I do about it? Let me tell you something. I'll tell you one of them. Can I tell you one of them? Can I tell you one of them? It is simple. Listen. I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell you one of them. Number one, whichever way you can, but get the teachings about Jesus Christ right. Get your doctrine about the person of Christ right. You understand? And once you get that right, listen to me, start praying and fasting. Just start praying and fasting. Start praying and fasting. For as long as you can. What do I mean by for as long as you can? Because you see, the Spirit of God can sustain hunger in you until you mature. Of course, He's not going to leave you fasting when He knows He has to be using you for soul winning somewhere. But when He makes those impressions, allow Him to use that time until you mature. Some of you, the time is now. 